How's everybody see that uh, cigar box bass guitar that was being played this morning? That's pretty nifty. Oh, that's good, Troy. I couldn't come up with a title, so he just named it Sermon. <laughs> hey, whatever works. That's what we're here for. Anybody need a Bible? We got we got both the elders here on either side of the church. Anybody need one? Well, this morning I have uh, I got a couple of questions that that are prominent in the news. They're prominent on social media. They're prominent in this church. They're prominent on the streets. And I hope today, we've talked about these things before. We really have. We, we, we haven't gone in depth. Today I'm praying that uh, God just gives me the words to help clear up this mud puddle for everybody. You know, it's a serious, it's a serious topic. It's things that people really want to know. They don't understand. Let's just go to question number one. I've heard, it, I've heard it here a couple of times. I've heard it at work. I've heard it on, seen it on social media. If you, if, if, if you die an instantaneous death, snap of a finger, while committing a sin, will you still go to heaven? The first thing everybody wants to say is, and the, the go-to scripture, is God's grace is sufficient. Okay. S sufficient that doesn't really cover everything. That doesn't really cover everything. What we want to learn today is God's grace is sufficient under certain circumstances. Okay? Let's go to our first scripture. 2 Corinthians, verse 12 through 9, page 888. Each time he said, My grace is all you need, my power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's the go-to scripture for Christians and non-Christians alike. Everybody wants to go to that scripture. My grace is sufficient. That's all you need is my grace. I want to, I want to, I want to take this a little bit deeper, okay? But if you read that, how many of you would answer that question with a yes? You die an instantaneous death during a sin. How many of you would say... God's grace is sufficient and I'm going to go to heaven. Okay. Let's go to the next scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9 on page 896 if you're in learning the ropes. I'll give you a second to get there. I got, I got too excited. And I, I went ahead of y'all a while ago. Ephesians tells us, God saved you by His grace when you believed. When you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. God's grace is sufficient. When you believe, you can't claim God's grace if you don't believe. You can't claim God's grace if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is who He says He is. So if you're a Christian, or you hold that moniker of Christian, you need to understand, being a Christian is about your faith. It's about what you believe. You believe God's Word to be true. You believe Jesus Christ is who He says He is. That He came down from heaven. He walked in, uh, in living flesh amongst humans died of death and rose three days later only to promise that he's coming back again Amen. you have to believe that in order for God's grace to be sufficient you cannot claim to be a Christian if you do not believe Amen. you cannot claim that you know Jesus if you don't believe God's grace is only sufficient for those who believe so if you're a believer and you're committing a sin because we're all sinners. Let's not joke. Let's not kid around. Every one of us sins. Okay? I sin on a daily basis with my, with my human judgments. Went and watched the shack again last night. Once again, I, I'm convicted by my judgment. The color of someone's skin, the clothes that they wear, the way that they talk, the car that they drive, 
Whatever it may be, I am guilty of judging. That is my sin. That is my downfall. But I believe Jesus Christ to be the person He said He is. I believe that He came and carried my sin to the cross. I believe that He will come back and take me out of here when the time is right. I believe these things. So if I happen to die even here today making judgment on someone, I have confidence that God's grace is sufficient for me to get to heaven. If there's anyone in here today that is not a believer, that you cannot stand firm on God's Word, that you cannot hold conviction upon yourself when you leave this, this house of God, I cannot promise you that God's grace is sufficient. Because we know right here that it says God saved you by His grace, when you believed, you had faith. Faith. That's a mighty big word. It's a mighty big word with a lot and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of weight to it. Okay? Faith is enormous. Faith is everything that our belief is based on. Our faith that Jesus Christ is who He says He is. Keep this in mind for our for our next question. Turn with me to uh, John three sixteen on page eight eleven. Everybody knows this one. Most everybody has it memorized. For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes, everyone who believes in Him, will not perish but have eternal life. This does not say, for this is how God loved the world that He gave His one and only Son so that everyone will not perish but have eternal life. You know, folks, there, there are churches, there are preachers, there are pastors, there are deacons, there are uh, elders all over this country, all over this world who cherry pick the Bible. They cherry pick what scriptures they want you to hear and they twist those to make it fit their lifestyle. They take the Bible and they misconstrue the entire document and they call it prophecy. They take the Bible and they take out all the important things so that everyone who believes is not part of what they say because they know that they are sinning, that they are false property, that they are leading you astray. They take these things and they make it fit the world so that we're politically correct. God is not about political correctness. God is not about political correctness. You know, I, I, I've told you this many occasions. Standing before you today, I know but one way to preach, and that's directly from God's Word. He fulfills, he fulfills my words for me. He gives me what I need to tell you on a daily basis. Yes, I do my studies. Yes, I, I go into deep prayer about these sermons before I get up here and I, and I say a word because I know I'm going to be judged more harshly than anyone else. But I can promise you, there is no compromise in the Bible. Right. There will be no compromise in this church. We will preach from God's Word and hopefully, hopefully, People will understand that that's not judgment. Yes, I'm, I am guilty of judging people. Yes, I am. And I'm, work, I'm working on that. But I can promise you, in front of this cross, I am not judging. I am not compromising the Word of God. And that appears to be judgmental to some people. There are things that we believe, the things that we have faith in, that we are not going to compromise the Word on, no matter who you may be. You may walk through that door next Sunday and somebody's standing there at the barrel waiting to hand me a check for $100,000. But I'm going to vet that person before I take that check. I'm going to vet that person before I take that check. Okay? I, people have been asking me to marry them, uh, officiate their weddings. I will not officiate a wedding until I have spoken to the bride and the groom. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to compromise God's Word. There are things that people need to understand or, or us not compromising, but it's not judgment. You cannot expect for this scripture 
God so loved the world that He sent His only Son for those that who believe will have eternal life. You cannot expect God to compromise that. God did not compromise that. Jesus did not compromise that. And we will not compromise you. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many people that, that are just totally confused about how to get to heaven. Here's what you need to know. Very plain and very simple. You accept Jesus Christ into your heart. You admit that He is your Lord and Savior. And you believe that He is who He says He is. You can get that salvation. You can get that eternal life. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're sinning. Okay? Obviously, we all want to try to live our life in God's shadow. Yes? In the shadow of Jesus Christ. We have a whole, we have a whole road map right here to explain to us how we're supposed to live our lives. We have to have faith in this Word. We have to believe it. God knows that we're sinners. Okay? It happened in Genesis early on. Okay? And it didn't start with Eve eating the, eating the fruit. It started with, with Adam. Okay? Compromising the garden. How did he ever let the, the, the snake in the garden? He compromised God. That's where sin started. Right then and right there. We can no longer afford to let the snake in the garden, folks. You have to accept Jesus Christ. You have to have faith in His Word. You have to believe that He is who He says He is and that He's coming back one day. All of these things guarantee you your eternal life. No matter where you came from or where you're going. And I'm going to go a little bit further on that. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 through 16. This one's going to take a little while to read, but I'm going to read it for you because it's important that we... This is the parable of the vineyard workers. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. At 9 o'clock in the morning... He was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard. At noon and again at three, he did the same thing. At five o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? And they replied, because no one hired us. The landowner told them, they go out and join the others in my vineyard. That evening, he told the foreman to call the, workers, call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. When those hired at 5 o'clock were paid, he received the full day's wage. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed they would receive more. But they too were paid a day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people worked only one hour and yet you paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. He answered one of them, friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay these last workers the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are those who are last now will be first then and those who are first will be last so you're asking me what does that have to do with dying an instantaneous death that that parable is not so much about this topic but i will tell you this god gave it to me and he opened my eyes to this it does not matter folks how long it takes you to come to know jesus it doesn't matter if you're the last one in or the first one in. Getting to know Jesus is the reward. We're all getting paid the same. Once we believe, we believe. We are saved. We get our eternal life. It doesn't matter if it happens on your deathbed. Okay? If you die an instantaneous death and someone has a chance to come pray over you and you're able enough to say, I accept you, Jesus, take me home. You believe. In that moment, you believe. But you're the last one in. How is that fair? How is that fair? 
Jesus said, what's it to you? Yeah? Jesus said, what's it to you? That's basically what that prayer was all about. What's it to you? It doesn't matter. Whoever was last will be first, and whoever is first will be last. It does not matter as long as you accept Jesus Christ. Go to the next one, Troy. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Whew, man, let me tell you. All right, so here's, here's, the other, here's the other topic we want to touch on today. Let me get a drink. Here's the other topic we want to talk, talk about today. We've talked about it before, but it's been in the news. I saw it posted by someone I went to school with on Facebook. And here's, here's, here it is. Here's the headline. Homosexuals can be Christians. You believe me? You believe me? John 8, 21. Before we answer that question, just... I ain't, I'm not asking for a roar, roar or a bunch of hands up. That's just the question. Homosexuals can be Christians. Here we go. John 8, 21 through 24, page 817. Later Jesus said to them again, I am going away. You will search for me, but you will die in your sin. You cannot come where I am going. The people asked, is he planning to commit suicide? What does he mean we cannot go where he's going? Jesus continued, you are from below, meaning earth. I am from above, meaning heaven. You belong to this world. I do not. That is why I said you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am who I claim to be. Just read that. Can a homosexual be a Christian? No. 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 We're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna dig a little bit deeper. The Bible is cut and dry on this. We're going to dig a little deeper, okay? If you, are, if you are an acting homosexual, okay? Not someone who just feels like they might be or they want to try whatever. If you're an acting homosexual, you cannot be a Christian. Why is that? You belong to this world. I do not. That is why I said that you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am who I am. If you do not believe that, you cannot be a Christian. If you believe where it says that one man shall not lay with another man as a detestable sin, if you believe that to be true, you will not be a homosexual. Because you believe in the Word of God. You believe in the Word of God. No compromise. No compromise. There is no compromise in that. If you're an acting homosexual, you cannot say that you believe in the Word of God. If you cannot believe in the Word of God because you are an acting homosexual and you know that it says that's a detestable sin, can't be a Christian. Okay? Go to the next one. Before we get to that, let's just point out a couple of things. No compromise does not equal judgment. Okay? What you heard here today is no compromise of God's Word. God's Word says that a man and a man shall not lay together. It's a detestable sin. You have to believe that in order to believe everything we just got through reading in Scripture. That God is who He says He is. That Jesus is who He says He was. And He's coming back one day. If you believe God's Word, you cannot actively be a homosexual and be a Christian. It doesn't matter. It doesn't work. It doesn't jive. Because you're practicing sin. You're living your life in sin knowingly. We're not talking about the occasional judgment or curse word uh, that may come out of your mouth as you're driving down I-45. We're not talking about these sins that happen on a daily basis that are accidental. Okay? The ones that we commit that we don't know we commit. We're not talking about those. We're talking about living a lifestyle that goes completely against God's Word. If you do not believe in God's Word, that's on you. Okay? The good news is, is that it doesn't matter how late you come to know Him. It doesn't matter that you're the last one in. It doesn't matter that you're the first one in. That's the good news. The bad news is, I'm sorry, you cannot be a homosexual and be a Christian. You cannot claim that. That is not what God's Word says. 
and I will not compromise. You should not compromise. Your children should not compromise. These things should be made clear. There is nothing in the Bible that says man shall lay with man, and that's okay. Does it say that? Doesn't say it. It's not there. You'll never find it. Do not compromise God's word, and then you can become that Christian you're claiming to be. Once you believe, once you have faith, then you can be that Christian you claim to be. But if you have any doubt on anything in your life, not just homosexuality or instantaneous death, uh, murder, suicide, whatever, whatever topic you want to pick that's prominent in your life, you need to seek it. Find the answers right here. Come to me, I'll help you. Come to one of my elders, they'll help you. One of the lay pastors, they'll help you. We'll find you an answer. We may not know it right now, but we'll look for it and we'll find it. If there's an answer that stands on God's word, you will get it. But we're not going to compromise and tell you, yeah, that's okay. Until we know for a fact God says it's okay. All right? So, in order to get to that point, that time, that stage in your life where you want to believe, where you know that you have that eternal life, where you know that God's grace is sufficient, there's anybody here today who needs to get there, who wants to understand the passion in my voice this morning, who wants to understand the lack of compromise in God's Word, the fact that I'm strong enough to stand here and tell you the truth and not fear the repercussions that may or may not come from my words. If you need to get to that point in your life, I want you to read Romans 10, 9 with me on page 864. If you openly declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. This is the key to the door that you've all been looking for. That door is Jesus Christ. He's the only way we're going to get to heaven. He's the only way we're going to pick up God's sufficient grace. He's the only way we're going to get everlasting life. Just come to know Jesus. Walk hand in hand with the man. You know, if you haven't seen the movie yet, there's a line in there a couple of times. Jesus is he's not looking for uh, hostages. He's looking for friends. You know, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm not looking for hostages. I'm looking for friends. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be part of your life. He wants to be there in the bad times, be there in the good times. If you'll just let him walk with you. He's there at all times, always. Start with me today by saying this prayer with me. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Your Word says that if I believe in my heart and I openly declare with my mouth that Jesus is my Savior, that I can be saved. Father, I recognize that our world is evil and I need You in my life, Father. I just pray today, I pray today that You will come into my heart and I say it right now, Father, that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Father, I believe that Jesus is who He says He is. I believe He left the riches of heaven, the most beautiful kingdom, to come here and be poor and lowly and be spat upon, beaten and tortured, cursed, only to be crucified on the cross, thrown in a cave, 